Vampires Mythical creatures that survive by feeding on the blood of the living. Vampires have been featured in folklore and fiction of various cultures for hundreds of years, predominantly in Europe, although belief in them has waned in modern times. Though different cultures have their own version of the undead, they are similar in most characteristics. But what cultures are they most notorious in? Legends about vampires are among the most persistent and widespread folk beliefs, and can be found in cultures the world over. Most of the myths consist of the idea of the undead consuming the life force of the living, usually in the form of flesh or more common, blood. With that being said, let's check out the different versions of the undead, from around the world. Up first, we have vampires from Greece. Greek vampires, known as Vrilalakas, are believed to be the spirit of a deceased person who has not been properly mourned or whose body has not been given the proper burial. It is said that because of this, the spirit might linger around the corpse and reanimate it. The bodies of Vrikalakas have the same distinctive characteristics as the bodies of vampires in Balkan folklore. They do not decay, instead, they swell and may even attain a drum-like form, being very large, have a ruddy complexion, and are, according to one account, fresh and gorged with new blood. Next up, from China. The Jiangxi. The Jiangxi, are a type of undead creature found in Chinese folklore. Although its Chinese name is often translated as, Chinese hopping vampire, zombie, or ghost, its literal meaning is, stiff corpse. There are many ways for a dead body to turn into a Jiangxi. According to one version of the myth, a Jiangxi is created when a person suffers a violent death, such as suicide, hanging or drowning. Such deaths cause the soul to be unable to leave the body, thus resulting in a reanimated corpse. Another belief is that a corpse may become a Jiangxi, if it is not given a proper burial. For instance, if a burial was postponed after death, a dead body may become restless, and return to haunt the living. Still other versions of the myth tell of people hiring a Taoist priest to animate a corpse of a loved one so it can hop home for burial should the family not have the means to bring them home. Next. America. Americans have a long-standing love-hate relationship with the undead. Legends surrounding vampires have made a surprising impact on how we live, and die. Cremation has become so popular in America that it recently surpassed burial as the funerary rite of choice. Few realize that the practice entered American life, in part, as a deterrent to vampirism. A story dating back to 1892, tells of a young woman named Mercy Brown, who, at the age of 19 passed away from tuberculosis. Her body, however was ordered to be exhumed, after more family members became ill with the same symptoms. Their idea was she must be infecting the rest with her illness. Once exhumed, her body showed very little signs of decay, and there was still blood in her heart, leading them to believe she was indeed coming back and infecting others. Mercy's heart and liver were removed and burned, and the ashes were mixed with water to create a tonic and was given to the sick family member to drink, as an effort to resolve his illness and stop the influence of the undead. The young man died two months later. Next on our list. India. In Hindu folklore, the Vetala is an evil spirit who haunts cemeteries and takes demonic possession of corpses. They make their displeasure known by troubling humans. They can drive people mad, kill children, and cause miscarriages, but also guard villages. 
They are hostile spirits of the dead trapped in between life and afterlife. These creatures can be repelled by the chanting of mantras. One can free them from their ghostly existence by performing their funerary rites. Being unaffected by the laws of space and time, they have an uncanny knowledge about the past, present, and future and a deep insight into human nature. Therefore many sorcerers seek to capture them and turn them into slaves. For our next vampire country. Australia. In Australia, the Yaramawaihahu, their version of a vampire, is a legendary creature found in Australian Aboriginal mythology. According to legend, the creature resembles a little red frog-like man with a very big head, a large mouth with no teeth and suckers on the ends of its hands and feet. The Yaramawaihahu is said to live in fig trees. Instead of hunting for food, it is described as waiting for an unsuspecting traveler to rest under the tree. The creature then drops down and uses its suckers to drain the victim's blood. After that it swallows the person, drinks some water, and then takes a nap. When the Yaramawaihahu awakens, it regurgitates the victim, leaving them shorter than before. The victim's skin also has a reddish tint to it that it didn't have before. If this process is repeated, the victim becomes a Yaramawaihahu themselves. For our final entry. The Philippines. The Mananangal is the Philippines' version of the undead. It is said to be able to separate its upper torso from the lower part of its body and their fangs and wings give them a vampire-like appearance. The Mananangal is said to favor preying on sleeping, pregnant women, using an elongated proboscis-like tongue to suck the hearts of fetuses, or the blood of someone who is sleeping. It also haunts newlyweds or couples in love and sometimes a newborn child. Due to being left at the altar, grooms-to-be are one of its main targets. The severed lower torso is left standing, and is the more vulnerable of the two halves. Sprinkling salt, smearing crushed garlic or ash on top of the standing torso is fatal to the creature. The upper torso then would not be able to rejoin itself and would perish by sunrise. So, what did you think of the vampires from around the world? Do you know of any more? Drop a comment and let me know, and as always, thank you for watching.